What's up, GGTV? We, I am live from the 405 with my buddy Lucas, and this is the first episode of Plant That Flag, where we discuss what all is going on in the world of Sooner football. This week, we will be discussing rankings, the Big 12 championship, among several other things. So, Lucas, you go first. What would you like to discuss? I'm just going to start off by saying it's really unfortunate the West Virginia game didn't happen. After the Baylor game, we really needed it because our offense looked like complete crap against Baylor. Yeah, I think the I think with the Baylor game, what a lot of people weren't what a lot of people don't realize is that we had like we didn't get any practice really in because of COVID protocols. So I don't know. I think I think this weekend's gonna be different, man. Like with the with the uh, Big Twelve awards coming out and a lot of snubs happening, I just I don't see. I thought it was gonna be a close game up until the rank the awards came out. I don't see Ronnie Perkins and them letting letting that fly. I I I just don't see Iowa State standing a chance. I'm not sure. Iowa State is a really really good team and. I don't think we're going to have a problem sticking in the game defensively. It's going to be a low-scoring game. But our offense has been so streaky this year. I don't – I think if we get in a cold streak, which we've been doing at some points in the games, Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback. And he can break defenses, even if it's for a touchdown – or 10 points, like him to that, him to Kohler is a deadly combination. I don't know if we have anyone to cover that big of a tight end. He's killed us like the last two times we faced him. Yeah, but I mean, then you could go back to the what we said when we discussed Bedlam game where we had all of our starters and all of our players now for the most part. So I don't know, man. I just. I, I teeter back and forth. Like for a while, I thought it was going to be close, just because of how good Iowa State's been. But the more I talk with people, and the more I like kind of assess the past few games and stuff, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not disrespecting Iowa State. They're they're a top ten team for a reason. But I just I don't think they'd be top ten if we would have had our full roster when they played us back in the beginning of the year. Yeah. See, I said going into the beginning of the year that Iowa State was going to beat us in the regular season, and then we were going to get them back in the Big Twelve title game. Yeah, I, I, think- I. That's what I had. I. I didn't. I didn't. We always lose. Oh, you always lose this one game that they shouldn't. Um, I think. I think that's a fair thing to say. But I. Uh, whenever Sammy and all of us first started discussing stuff like in the beginning of the year or like towards the summer with GGTV, Sammy and I both said that we had Iowa State OU in the Big 12 championship. And then obviously Iowa State got upset their first game. And then I was like, wow, I kind of look like a dumbass. But in the end, I guess, in the end, it ended up working out. I feel the exact same way. I just think Iowa State is. They play good side. They play good ball on both sides. They're just an amazingly coached team. Matt Campbell is an incredible coach. What he does with not that much talent is just spectacular. Yeah, I just – I don't know, man. I think I think it's it, it's just – it's hard to bet. Like, do you think they're – you don't think they'll – you're you still picking OU, right? Yeah. Going up until the last, like – Two days, I thought Iowa State was going to win. But then something sparked yesterday that I just think our defense is going to carry us to a win. Maybe the whole playoff thing, maybe the rankings, I don't know. It just kind of struck me that, like, yeah, I think we're going to end up winning that game. Let, speaking of the rankings, let's, let's dive into that a little bit, you know, because I think everybody that watches college football – can, even SEC fans can agree that it's absolute horseshit that Florida barely dropped, losing to an unranked LSU team. And I don't want to hear the defending champions excuse. I just – I don't. There's no reason for that. Yeah, there's no need for Cincinnati to drop a spot for not playing when, like, Ohio State and, you know, 
them play five games and they don't get punished. No, I, that that that's a conversation in and of itself. The Ohio State, the whole conference, conveniently changing the the rules for oh now you only have to play five games. You don't have to play six to go to the title. You know, and here's my thing: is I was watching the whole thing yesterday, and they said like teams like Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State get like special treatment. They get the benefit of the doubt. Oklahoma is probably one of those teams too. Let's be honest. So let's say we only play five games. We're a playoff team, according to how everything looks right now. And that doesn't really sit right with me. I think you earn it on the field, and I don't think teams like Ohio State have done it this year. Yeah, Oh, so here, here's where I stand on that. Well, uh, I kind of see, like, I know we're supposed to just pick one side and plant the flag, as we say, and stick with it. But uh, on one hand, I, I mean, I'm always, I 100% think it's bullshit that Ohio State is going to probably make the Final Four regardless of what happens. But on the other hand, like, regardless of the fact they haven't played anyone, they're still one of the top teams in the, in the country. So it's like – it is – They are one of the four best teams. I just don't think – I think they should get punished for only playing five games. Yeah, so. I think they should be. I think they should be New Year's Six eligible, but I don't think they should have been playoff eligible. Yeah, but it is what it is. You know, everyone always talks about like everybody, all the lower totem pole fan bases in the Big Twelve always talk about how we get privilege and all that. But the fact is, the committee does not like the Big Twelve at all. We don't like we do get we do get the benefit of the doubt with certain things, but I don't think OU gets favored as much as the SEC and Big Ten do. I just yeah yeah. Um, what do you see happening? Like, who do you think is going to be the top four, and then who should be the top four Sunday? Well, well. It all depends on – honestly, it really all de- depends on the Clemson and Notre Dame game because who's – what is Clemson fourth or are they thir- they're third and Notre Dame's fourth or what is the – what's the – Notre Dame is second, Clemson is third. Okay. So, even if – I feel like even if uh, Clemson beats Notre Dame, they're just going to swap the two. Yeah. I think realistically, um, I I don't think A and M is a Final Four team. I think we're going to play. I think I, number one, the Aggies Aggie fans saying we want to make the Final Four. No, you fucking don't. Worst <laughs> fan base in football. They have little brother syndrome. They haven't done anything since Johnny. And they haven't really done anything since the thirties, but. They had a good year with Manziel, and they thought they became the greatest thing ever. I think I think we're gonna play. I I, I hope give please give OU if we beat Iowa State this weekend. Please give OU Texas A and M and give us the Cotton Bowl. I will go if the tickets aren't like seven hundred dollars. I'll go. Yeah, no, I'd love to see Oklahoma and A and M play. I, I think that's going to happen. I think that's the money game. I think we'll either play them or Georgia, but revenge for I don't, the Rose Bowl. Yeah, I don't. It'll never. To me, in my personal opinion, that'll never be revenge. <laughs> they beat us when we had Baker, and and it came down to coaching. But that, I I don't want to talk about the Rose Bowl. That's that's an open wound that I'm never going to get over. I don't think anyone's gonna get over that one. I that I like watching rewatching games, and it sucks because the Rose Bowl is one hundred percent one of the absolute best college games ever. But I'm never gonna rewatch I, it. I try doing it because I go through. I'll watch the first half. Yeah, and I'll watch most of the fourth quarter until the last minute. I don't even do that, man. <sighs> it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think I think we're gonna play A and M. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different bowl game talks. One big one I'm hearing is that Texas is going to play Arkansas, which says a lot about the current state of Texas football. Yeah, to be in a bowl game with Arkansas, who wouldn't have made a bowl game if it weren't for COVID. 
Yeah. I'm going to say something that a lot of Oklahoma fans aren't going to like. I feel bad for Sam Ellinger. He is a really good quarterback that has such bad coaching. If he went, like, pretty much anywhere else, he would be one of the best quarterbacks in football. Um, I don't know, man. It's I don't – I don't feel I don't feel sorry for him because or for Texas or any of that because he people the Texas fan base were so shitty to us about Baker and that was our guy and yeah. you look at Ellinger and he's the most accomplished outside of like what Vince Young like he's their most accomplished quarterback that they've had and I just, I don't know I just like he's a good dude. Don't get me wrong, but he digs a lot of the. He opened all those wounds back up when he did the "We're back" and all that. Like he, oh, yeah. I don't feel sorry for him, honestly. Um, but I mean, like he. Don't get me wrong; he's a good dude, and he's a hell of a ball player. And I won't let my opinion of that be swayed. But I just, I don't feel sorry for him. I don't feel sorry for anything Texas related because of how, like I said, how they treated us when we had Baker. Yeah, and Kyler, they threw, they they threw, a, they were like, oh, Kyler lost to Ellinger, and then they got destroyed in the Big Twelve Championship on my birthday. So I, I don't feel any any pity or remorse for Texas, anything Texas related. But and Justin Tucker can go fuck himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he can. So what do you you got any score predictions? How how close of a game do you think it's going to be? I think it's still going to be a close game. Um, I'm probably going maybe 31-14. Yeah. That, I that's don't kinda... see our defense giving up, like, anything. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm somewhere between a two- to three-touchdown range. I think a 17-point game is a pretty safe, pretty safe bet to make with those, but – I, I I mean it's hard to not it's hard to not see a pick six with our defense how they've been playing. Yeah. Um, it really all comes down to how Purdy plays, but I don't know. I just with the Big Twelve awards coming out and a lot of the snubs from OU happening, all that you've seen, all the chatter from the players on Twitter, they're all pissed. Yeah, which I'm not one that finds awards to be like a super big deal it's okay i don't see it being a super big deal to fans players yes fans i don't know yeah but we're talking strictly about how the the players feel yeah the defensive snubs not us not having anyone on the first i mean didn't grinch got robbed like last was it last year that he got robbed of Big 12 defensive coach. Yeah. Who won it last year? Baylor? It was, it was either Baylor or Iowa State, right? Probably. I'm not sure. Let me, let me fact check that real quick. Let's see here. 2019 All Big 12 Football Awards announced. <clears throat> well, defensive lineman of the year went to James Lynch from Baylor. Defensive freshman year of the year went to TCU player. Defensive player of the year, yeah, I think, I think both of. Defensive lineman of the year and defensive player of the year went to James Lynch. I'm trying to see where the coaching award. How did Kenneth Murray not win defensive player of the year last year? I don't know, man. I That that still bothers me. That was the big – he wasn't even nominated, right? Like I don't think so. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. That's the big – that was the big snub and, like, the big, like, what the hell moment. <clears throat> yeah. Kenneth Murray was such a lights out player for us. But I feel like we always have that. Like with our bad defense, we always have like just this outstanding linebacker. We had Stryker, who is still one of my favorite players. We had Oboe, and then we had Kenneth Murray. I mean the Landshark time frame, that was there it's weird because when I moved here, 
Oklahoma was known for their defense, not for their yeah. offense when they had Landry because you had Tony Jefferson out there. And Aaron Colvin. <laughs> yeah, the Land Sharks were a fucking problem. And then we our... brought Mike Stoops back. And that's where it all went wrong. Never should have got rid of Venables. Nope. And look what he's doing now. But I, I like Grinch, man. I'm a big fan of Grinch. I've liked Grinch. I've liked that mm-hmm. hire since day one. Yeah. <clears throat> Once he can finally start coaching a whole class of his own recruits, we're in for some. We're in for some good football. He's going to stick around for a while, though. I think so too. We did really good in recruiting. Like I'm not major into the whole recruiting trail. I'm like just put yeah. the players on the field, let them play. But like it seems like we have a really good class this year. Yeah, I'm not – I'm kind of in the minority. Um, I personally think it's a little weird how some fan bases get so obsessed over what these high school kids are doing. I think it's I think it's really fucking weird, honestly. I do too. But I'm a firm believer. I don't, I don't give a shit what you do until you put on a uniform of my team. So, like, whatever you did in college, like when like – when, when New England drafted Nikhil Harry, they were like, oh, but he did so good in college. Like, what has he done in New England? Nothing, except for run the opposite way. Same thing with high school kids, man. Like, everyone's always like, oh, we, we got this five-star. And I'm like, okay, like, you're you're literally stalking what a 19-year-old kid is doing. That, and you're 45. That's really weird. But, yeah. I mean, I get it. I get the whole aspect of – you know, like the stat chasing and stuff and keeping up with what people are doing. <clears throat> I just have a little brother who was playing football, and I, I that's kind of what I compared it to is like, I don't know how the hell I would feel if people were tweeting about my little brother and stuff, it, you know. but It's weird. And especially when people, like, get mad that a recruit doesn't know their team and they just – People that tweet – people. Let's let's get this out of the way. People that tweet recruits are the worst. People that tweet players at all are any the- player that's not any player that's not a professional player. Yeah, like like Buki drives us all nuts. But I'm not out here tweeting them. You fucking bum. Which I think a I, lot I, of people do, and I'm like, I think I did. I think I, I think I did tweet Cybert a few times that he was a bum. But I mean, he was like a super senior at that point. Never tweet Cyber is a bum. Cyber's the best. I love him so I hated much. Cyber. He drove me nuts. He barely missed. I just didn't like him, dude. He would always, ever since that Army game, ever since he gave me such PTSD with the Army game, and I don't know, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of him. I like Gabe way more. Yeah, my guy's still going to be a Michael Honeycutt. Yeah, Honeycutt was a beast. Who was after Honeycutt? Like, who was between Honeycutt and Cybert? There was a kicker for like a year. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't think of his name, though. People just come and go. He was there. Like, he's, it's hard to remember someone was there for a year. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't know that I can – That I don't know. It's not coming to me. Yeah, the recruiting class, OU's doing really, really good in recruiting. Um, I think the marketing with OU is – it's a little biased for me to say, but I, I don't think that there's anyone out there that is better at recruiting and treating the recruits like gold than OU is because you see all those videos of our coaches out here FaceTiming the kids and they're wearing their, their specific design on their hoodie for the kid that they're talking to. Like, that's just that's just pure gold, man. Like, yep. It's it's really hard to to contest with OU and recruiting as far as you know like I'm sure Bama and Clemson they're all like you want to win championships but it seems like OU is do you want to do you want to be successful and do you want to like find more in yourself you know like cuz I I don't know I just I'm really fond of how our how our coaching staff is with recruits and with players um there's sometimes Lincoln I think could could go to bat more for some of the players, it's never it's never really the players. It's more so a plays on the field that I don't think that he challenges enough or like voices enough frustration. Yeah, you know? I love Lincoln, but there there is a lot of times a lot of questionable 
stuff with him. Like, I'm very happy with Lincoln. Don't get me wrong. But, like, one, he has a really bad tendency to take his foot off the pedal. Absolutely. Like, I understand not wanting to beat your opponent by 100, but sometimes you got to beat your opponent by 100 because your defense, until this year, Lincoln cannot Lincoln. hold a lead. Lincoln is the exact opposite of Switzer. Like, they're two totally – and then Bob, Bob, Bob was dead center in the middle. He's like, I can be conservative, or I can put my foot on the gas. I love Bob. I miss <laughs> Bob. I love Bob, too, but I don't know. I think his time had come with OU when he left. Yeah. I think, I think, he, I think that gap he knew, but <clears throat> that's why I'm excited to see the XFL come back and see, see what he can do. It was really cool to see him be at OU for like four days. They got me worked up thinking he was going to be an assistant for us. They always do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think all in all, I think we pretty much touched on touched on all the big points. How long have we been? How long have we been talking? Probably around <laughs> twenty minutes. Yeah, I wanted to make it 20, 20 to 30. I just – I feel like if we tri- – <laughs> it, it's because when you watch the Mountaineer effect, Sam and Mark, their videos are like 30 minutes long. But I don't really know what – we we hit a lot in in a matter of that 20 minutes. I mean, what we even went out of above and beyond and talked about recruiting. and Yeah. Now, I'm going to say this. It's not Oklahoma. Well, it kind of is Oklahoma because – who knows? It could come down to us. Cincinnati should be a playoff team over Georgia, over Florida. What is your high with Cincinnati? Why are you? They're so- an undefeated team that I'm pretty sure could go and beat pretty much anyone not named Alabama. I don't know that I agree with that. They should get a chance at the playoffs. Especially over like if if, <laughs> if they would have expanded, I think the true mess up, the true screw up this year was not expanding, because you could have just waved it off and said, "Hey, we did the eight team thing and it didn't work." COVID because of COVID and all that. Like this is ultimately the biggest blow off year that you could have had. So testing out the expansion, I think would have been would have been the best way for that to happen. But they should have done it. But they. Yeah. I think eight teams, and that's that. I don't – no more, no less. I could go for 16, but eight I think is probably the way to go. Yeah. I think it needs to be three – like the three conference cha- – like – or no, the five conference champions, the top group of five team, and then two wild cards. Do I want to buy – I didn't even have the fucking chance. I literally clicked my sorry, my buddy my buddy sent me a link to the PS5 and it sold out immediately. I've lost out on the PS5 twice today. That's how the bots be. I think he said the website keeps crashing. But yeah, sorry, we were discussing Cincinnati and Who do you think should be a playoff team if it came down to us in Cincinnati? Um, I think our conference holds a lot of weight over Cincinnati. Um, I really don't know. I, I mean, we could, I think theoretically, if I don't think anybody would object if they were that torn on who should do it and they were just like, all right, before we have the playoffs, let's have a pre-playoff game and have OU and Cincinnati play and then give us, give us rest. But. That's my I, thing. I don't that's, really know because it's it's not fair. It's not fair to gauge our season this year because of the stupid suspension that keeps getting extended for marijuana. Baylor. What is with that? Why does he keep getting like Perkins and Stevenson came back? I don't understand why Bridges hasn't come back yet. I don't get it either. And there was it was to the point to where if you call NCAA, if you, if you call the school, like if you call the NCAA, and then you wait, you speak to someone and you ask them about that case, they just hang up on you. They don't listen. They they get or they get real rude about it. Cause a lot of OU fans were calling in and I was gonna do it today. 
But uh, a lot of OU fans were calling the NCAA and saying, what the hell is going on? Why is this kid getting – I what frustrates me is Baylor had rape scandal. Not even scandals. It was proven. It was literally got... proven. And they got a slap on the wrist for it. And you have a guy that – should he should he have should he be laugh? Should he have smoked weed around yeah. there's like, nothing wrong with smoking weed. That is the most bullshit suspension in football. For it to have gone on any it really should have just at most should have been the Peach Bowl and that's that. I get that he's a college athlete and he's not allowed to, but it's fucking legal here. So, like, telling a it, it, that the NCAA has such horseshit standards when it comes to what the kids can and can't do. They love profiting off of their names and not giving them any of the money. And you're in college, you're you're gonna want to drink and party and smoke and do all this stuff. Like telling these kids, hey, don't do that. You know, like it. It just I don't understand it. Bosworth said it best. Like I think, I think the I think Nick, Nick Saban hit it on the head whenever he had had that press conference and was talking about every time a kid makes a mistake, you want to see what we're going to do and you want to see us ruin their life and not let them touch the field. And he said, "Who learns from that?" You know, he said he had I forgot the player's name, but he said that guy went on to get a doctrine and to get drafted, be be a first and second round draft pick. And he said, do you think that I – you think I made the wrong decision not letting him – or letting him play instead of not letting him sit for making a one little mistake? Was it probably one of – it was it that off – or that break when some dude, like, stole something or something, like shoplifting? I can't remember when the I, – I think the conference was in – I want to say 2012 or 2011. I'm not for sure. I just – I remember – I remember that. That's one of my favorite college press conferences ever because, I mean, he hit the – regardless of what people say about Nick Saban, he's the GOAT for starters. He's the absolute best college football coach ever. Yeah. Emphasis on college. He sucked in the yeah. NFL. Yeah, no, he didn't do he good. He fucked he Miami didn't over. He, he didn't do good with Miami, but – I mean, just think about the Browns, dude. They literally had Nick Saban and Bill Belichick at the same time. And then Art Modell decided to, you know, fire Bill and move the team to Baltimore. Yeah. But speaking of Cleveland and OU, how about Baker, you know, balling out? Death, taxes, and Baker's defense is blowing games for him. Yeah, like I tweeted, where have I seen Baker putting up 40-plus and, you know, defense failing him? Honestly, though, Lincoln Riley just needs to go tell recruits to go watch that game from Monday. He doesn't need to say anything else. I mean, Orlando kept Miles in check. And then Mark Andrews Lawrence, was falling out. Hollywood had a late game heroic TD. After those drops, yeah. And uh, I don't – I didn't hear Ben Powers do anything dumb, so. Lamar pooped his pants. A starting quarterback should not leave the t- leave the field unless he is actually hurt. If it was cramps, that's pussy shit. If he had to shit himself, shit himself on the field. He pulled a Paul Pierce. Yep. I hate Paul Pierce. Yeah, yes. I think I think all in all, I mean, OU's up to some. I I tweeted like previously that previous in this year that I have that I think they'll win a natty in the next four years or so and people when we lost to k-state they were like oh really you really think that it's like yeah i still do still think they can win one in four years you don't i think i think so too i I don't know if it's gonna be next year no well the good thing that i was seeing from all the videos talking about the recruiting is that it seems like our defensive class is all coming back next year is Perkins coming back? Because I've heard that, often. That's now. what I mean. That's what the coach was saying about. He was talking about uh, one of the new recruits and said that he's going to be able to learn from the best and brought up all the names and stuff. He said because all of them are coming back next year. So, 
I don't see Perkins not. I don't see him doing anything but coming back. Yeah, I think he might need to. I don't want to say he needs another year. But another year would would make one hundred percent a solid case. Like there would be no question for him. Yeah. I, I mean, I love Perkins. He's he's definitely like him and Benito are like my favorite players on the team defensively, at least. I love Benito. Yeah, I'll, um, I'm a big Isaiah Thomas guy, and I'm a big uh, Trey Brown fan. Yeah, I like Trey Brown a lot. Part of the reason I like Benito is because he's always defending LeBron on Twitter. Yeah. I'm also well, a Bookie fan. You're I love a Bookie, Bookie fan? I love Bookie. I think he is a great player that makes discipline mistakes. issues. But serious question. I don't remember. Did people give Orlando Brown the same shit on Twitter that they give Bookie for, you know, going his full his first two seasons, getting a personal foul penalty every game? Orlando Brown is a far better player than Bookie is. And I think that's why I, – I mean, people gave him shit. But but that's the thing is, like, no offense to Buki, but Orlando Brown, he could fuck up and then we could be like, you know, like, it's annoying. But he would go out and do a play that would immediately make you go, oh, okay. Yeah, I used to talk a lot of shit on Orlando because it was like whatever – like I said, I think he went 24 straight games of having a personal foul penalty, at least one. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Great well. player, though. Great player. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can discuss, honestly. Um, Baker's going to lead the Browns to the Super Bowl in the next three seasons. Mm, that's a bit of a hot take. It's kind of a joke, but at the same time, if they can get competent secondary, I think they could beat pretty much anyone not named Kansas City. Even this year? I think they might be the biggest threat to Kansas City in the playoffs. Yeah. I don't think the set – I think Pat Mahomes is going to decimate that defense because their secondary can't cover a fucking seven-year-old, but – The Chiefs' secondary sucks too, though. Oh, very true. It's going to be a very – it's going to be a Baker. It'll be – it'll be yeah, it'll be Texas Tech OU. And I am here for it. You got some pots and pans in the background going on. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. I don't care. It can be edited out, I think. But, yeah, I – Lucas, you want to you want to do the send off since I did the intro. Um, sure, but what should the send out be? It's up to you, man. You do it, and I'll figure something out for the next episode. No, no, you're getting thrown to the fire, buddy. I did the intro. You have been texting me for like three weeks saying you want to do an OU podcast. Hey, man, when are we going to do the OU podcast? You have also been texting me. It has been mutual, sir. But you're the one that blows my phone up about you said we're going to do Not it. Not true. Right? Not true. You were. I hadn't brought it up in like three or four days, and you texted me about it yesterday. Because he, Sammy told me that – well, you had texted me saying you wanted to do something about the Big 12 title game. Yeah. I and this has been Lucas and Cody on Plant That Flag. See you next time. <laughs> All right, man. We'll we'll end it on that note. Yeah, let's get a boomer out there. Boomer. Sooner. All right, later, man. I'm gonna go figure out dinner.